Hey there! So I have just created a new Ruby on Rails application and it is time to install all the boring stuff. It's time to install Bootstrap, Font Awesome, Device, Simple Form, Active Storage, OmniAuth and so on. And usually it takes me around 30 to 40 minutes to install all of them. And I have to always go through the documentation or to find some text snippets where I have it written down how to install Bootstrap properly on Ruby on Rails 6. But recently I found this gem named the Boring Generators. And basically it is a gem that you install into your development group. And uh, you can just run a command like rail generate boring bootstrap install and it will automatically install bootstrap. And with it works with a lot of different other tools. So it uh, helps you to decrease your development time in uh, installing all the, uh, all the default stuff. Now let's try to see how it works. Okay, first I will create a static page on which we are going to test everything. Let's say Rails generate controller, uh, home, index. And for it, I will create a root path. I will go to my roots and add a root home index. Okay, I will save and start the server and see if uh, our home page, our home index replaces the Rails uh, default page. So it is starting, it is compiling the application because it's starting for the first time. And here we have home index. Okay, let's save our changes. Git status, git add all, git commit main, home index. Done. And let's finally install this gem boring generators. So I'm taking the gem boring generators and I will add it to our gem file in the group development because we do not need it in our production and in test definitely. So bundle. And now we can take one of the generators. Now let's start with bootstrap, for example. So I will take this command, rails generate bootstrap, install, and run this command and see what happens. So it runs yarn add bootstrap jQuery pop.js. Now, usually I wouldn't remember this whole command. I would have to look it up somewhere. And it also inserts something into environment JS, creates a new file named stylesheets application SCSS, uh, adds something to our application JS and to our application HTML. Let's have a look at the git changes. What do I see here? So in application JS, it added bootstrap and uh, a link to stylesheets application. Then it created a new folder and a new view in JavaScript style sheets. So we can go to our JavaScript style sheets that was just created and it created this new file application SCSS and imported bootstrap inside. Then it also modified the environment.js and added jQuery and popper. So usually you would copy it from somewhere. Uh, usually you don't remember the stuff. So let's see if it works. I seem to have installed Bootstrap. Let's see if it works. I will open my development environment in one more tab and compare. Now it's taken some time to compile because we have added additional YARN packages. So let's wait. And uh, the moment of uh, truth is coming now. Okay, and here it is. So we have installed Bootstrap. Now you can see that the bootstrap font is different from the default Ruby on Rails font. So we seem to have installed it. But just to confirm, I will go to the docs and add some kind of bootstrap element. For example, a navbar. I'm taking the navbar and I will add it to our views, to our, uh, let's say, home index on top of everything. And voila, we have a bootstrap navbar. So the bootstrap CSS classes are working and the bootstrap is installed in just a few seconds. Looks great, yes? Okay, now let's install something else. Let's have a look at the usage and we can install uh, font awesome via yarn. So let's take this command. I will also save our changes. So git status, git add all, git commit main, install bootstrap. And now I will run rail generate boring font awesome yarn install. So it is adding yarn add font awesome 
installing the own packages and it modified our JavaScript style sheets application as CSS and application.js. Looks good. Let's have a look. I will go to our application.js and we see we have added font awesome and in application as CSS, we have also added font awesome. So looks nice. Let's check if it actually works. I will start the server and grab some kind of random uh, icon from font awesome and paste this HTML of the icon in our application. So uh, I will add it somewhere here above this home index or actually we can do it on the very bottom, doesn't matter. Now in the meantime, our application is compiling. Let's just wait for it. Wait for it, wait for it. And I will refresh once again. And here we have this icon. So font awesome is successfully installed. Looks nice. Now let's go to something harder. And let's say we will install device. Let's say we will install device and see what device libraries and what device commands the born generators run. I will say get status, get add all, get commit main, install font awesome. Good. And now I will install device. So Rails generate boring device install. Now it automatically adds device for user. And let's have a look. I'll type git status and what has changed. So we have added device to our gem file. Then in application controller, we said before action authenticate user. Then in development RB, we have added the application mailer. So all these commands that you would be manually doing or copy pasting from the device uh, readme, you would just have to go and do it one by one from the device readme, but boring generators does it all for you. And let's try to start our application and see if device is actually running and functioning correctly. I will refresh. I have to run migrations. I run the migrations. Okay. Duplicate table error, users already exists. It's because I have previously already tried. I will just type rails db drop, db create and db migrate and it should work. Now, most likely you're not going to have this error because I have already previously created a database Twitter development. So I had to recreate it once again. Okay, I resend, I refresh and here I am redirected to the user's login page. So let me sign up. I will add an email, a password and sign up. And here I have signed up and I have access to the application. So I have successfully installed device. Now let's have a look at something else. Let's install, for example, uh, device, device for GitHub. So this is quite uh, usually time, time consuming. You have to edit quite a lot of files for this. Let's save our changes, git status, git add all, git commit main, install device, Okay, and I will uh, run device GitHub OmniAuth to install uh, device for GitHub now and see how it works. So Rails generate boring OmniAuth GitHub install. So it must have added the gem OmniAuth GitHub, here it is. Then it uh, edited quite a few files and let's see what it says. Okay, we need to check if we have the roots correctly configured in our roots RB. And in the device.rb, we need to add the GitHub API keys. Let's do it. First, I will go to the roots. And here you see, we were given device for users, controllers, omni -out callbacks, users, omni -out callbacks. So I will use this new device uh, root. And you see in our controllers, we were given a users folder inside we have users omni auth callbacks controller and all the authorization that we need to log in with GitHub. And if we go to our uh, config initializes device RB, we will see that we were given a placeholder for the GitHub app ID and secret. So let's add this. I will go to my GitHub account Now I will go to settings and in settings, I will find developer settings or our apps 
register a new application. I will say boring app, let it be so. I need to add my homepage URL. It is going to be my local host. Application callback URL. It is going to be localhost slash users auth github callback. Okay, register application. And I'm given a client ID. I will add the client ID right here. And I'm going to generate a new client secret and copy it and add it in the app secret. And now let's see if we can log into the GitHub. I will start the server, refresh, run the pending migrations. We were adding only out to users. Let's see what we actually added. I will go to DB, migrate, add only out to users. We add provider and UID. Okay. So now I have this button, sign in with GitHub. I press the button. Okay, I authorize myself and I'm being redirected and I get some kind of error. Undefined method name. Now, if we go to user.rb, let's reload. Yeah, we uh, are offered by default uh, by OmniAuth to add a username, but we don't have a username in our database, so we don't need this line. I'm going to remove it and I think this line will be removed from the born generators also. Okay, I will try once again. I refresh and sign in with GitHub. And we have successfully signed in. Now to prove that we have signed in, we can actually display the user's uh, provider or UID. Let's display both. I will go to application and I will say equals current user dot email. Then we will say dot provider and dot uid let's display this and here we have the email the provider that is github and the unique github id so we have successfully installed the github omni auth and you see that the, this way you can really quickly and easily use uh, different generators to install standard uh, uh, libraries and uh, save quite a lot of time so I encourage you to try boring generators and uh, I have recently discovered them for myself and I'm really loving them and uh, have a nice day.